And let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. My dear friends, is everything all right with you? The Lord God's been good to us, eh, folks? He has been working mighty wonders with wonderful prayer campaigns. So let's seize the opportunity. I already have some experience because I've been following the gospel a little longer than you. There might be someone who's been a Christian longer than me. But 61 years in the faith, I'm, <laughs> I'm almost becoming a champion here. I don't know how much longer I'll live. But I think there still might be a very long road ahead of me yet. I have quite a few punches left to use against the enemy in Jesus' name. <laughs> but it's been wonderful. Recently, we've had hands of healing service. We've seen things that we've never imagined before. And, you know, it happens everywhere we go. We pray in Brazil and also abroad, and the Lord works. Our God is an awesome God. With Jesus, we'll see always wonders. With Jesus, it simply cannot be any other way. And if you happen to need a blessing here today, pay attention to what the Word of God is going to speak to your heart. Because it does speak, it directs us, it enlightens us. And when we do receive that enlightenment, my dear brother, just take a hold of the Word and the Lord's going to bless you in the name of Christ. And when the Lord God's blessing, you just believe in it. If you believe, you will see the glory of our God. Are you in need of a blessing? Just stand firm in God's Word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Speaking of standing firm in His Word, I want you to open your Bibles to, Psalms, uh, to Proverbs chapter 15 because we have a message today that we are going to study. And that is going to help so many, many people. When these words jump out before our eyes, you just need to receive them because whatever the Lord reveals to you, it's been done already. Or God's in the process of doing it. Just believe in it and the work is carried out. And today, all you have to do is come here in order to be blessed. Proverbs 15 verse 5 says this, A fool despises his father's instruction, but he who, re who receives correction is prudent. What's this thing, Dr. Suarez? I don't get it at all, folks. But when the Lord, when he rebukes you, you feel it, feel it in your heart. Maybe you have just entered into some kind of commitment with somebody. Or maybe you've gone too far with something. Perhaps you've uttered something or done something that was wrong. And a little later, your heart starts, it starts aching. You start feeling really bad. Talk to the Lord right then and there. Father, I was wrong. I need you to help me out. Later on, as you keep on praying, you'll know exactly what you must say. Now the fool, what does the fool do? He despises instruction. The Lord God is saying, this is not the way. You are opening yourself up to evil. You have opened up the door, the evil one, uh, the devil's going to come in, and he does not come in just to give you a whipping. Sometimes you end up getting cancer. That's a serious problem. Or you suffer a serious accident that leaves you maimed for the rest of your life. The person who does not accept correction, it's the Lord God who's saying, they're fools, they're stupid. The Lord is showing us what to do to keep the enemy of our souls from completing his work in our lives. You have a long journey ahead of you. Stand firm with Jesus, and your path is going to be wonderful. But he who receives correction is prudent. It's not enough just to receive the correction. You need to receive it with prudence, paying close attention to it, being ready to let go. You may have entered into the greatest commitment in your life. This can happen in the business world. The proposal is everything that you have desired. You even gave them your word, but you have been rebuked just like now. So receive it, receive it with prudence. But Dr. Suarez, I cannot go back on my word. But if you start praying, the Lord's going to make the other party say something and you'll answer. Then in this case, we'll suspend the whole deal and go back to square one. We're going to start all over again and the person's going to think, why, what did I say that? Why did I make that decision? And you used wisdom to get yourself out of that deal without it leaving any kind of stain on your character. Let us pray now. If you, receive, if you receive instruction and prudence, you'll, you'll be blessed. You'll receive deliverance. Father, thank you that these people have understood, that I have understood. We now pray and ask, bring the work to completion, Father. Delete everything that comes from the flesh and from the evil one. And put, O oh Lord, the truth in this person's mouth. I'm going to bless them. As a minister of the word of the Lord I say unto you that spirit that was sent from hell to make this person stray from the godly path and then cause them to suffer, which is something that's already happening. Take everything that belongs to you and come out in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. The goal of this study is for us to, um, uh, for us to change our behavior. 
A fool despises his father's instruction. The father speaks, my brother. My dear father, the Lord God show us the slightest little error. A sadness comes over us, father. Thank you. Forgive me. Give me the words so I can experience true repentance. The thing is true repentance. When you make a full confession, it deletes the transgression as if it had never existed. If we then confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The word talks about cleansing. Whoever's been cleansed, there's no more memory of sin at all. Don't be a fool. Take hold of your father's correction. The fool does not do that. He despises it. But he who receives correction, those who receive, who prudently receive correction, the right words are here with prudence. They're prudent and they'll be blessed. They'll be delivered. They'll be fulfilled. They won't stay in the enemy's hands any longer. You are going to be a blessing. Amen. Let's watch another person who was blessed, please. Elsa, what has gone done for I you? I used to have arthrosis in my knee, but now I'm walking. How long have you had arthrosis? For a really long time. Elsa, how did you used to walk before the prayer? I used to limp a Sh lot. Show us how. Was it like that? Yes. Elsa, walk properly now. Look at that, folks. Look at what God has done, folks. Our God is awesome. I get excited about the things God does. Let me talk to that person who is watching us and they really enjoy the faith show. You need to come to church at least on Sundays. You're missing out on a lot of things. My dear brothers, we need to take hold of Jesus on those Sundays, wherever you might be. If you are not at the house of God, you may write in great big letters on top of your mirror. When you look at your wake up call, I'm in sin. You need to come and hear the voice of the Lord. Failing to hear the voice of the Lord is a very grave sin because God's been speaking. He's never speaking so much. The climate has been changing. Who's ever seen people walking in the streets wearing their t-shirts in the middle of the winter in places where they used to wear very thick jackets up until a few years ago. Everything is changing. But the word of the Lord God is the medicine. Take hold of this word. People are going crazy about their folks, throwing all kinds of parties, doing crazy stuff, insulting the Lord, and the sings are already here, yet they refuse to open their eyes, but we are prudent people. Amen? Let the Lord Jesus embrace you in the Word. Let Him comfort you. Let Him transform you. Let Him really transform your life, and let Him love you. Then you'll see what the Lord God has for you. But I have another message to share with you. It's in the Jeremiah 36, verse number 7. I read this message over in Porto Alegre. And if I don't share it with you, I'll be indebted to you. Because this is a very important message the Lord has given to me. And which I believe is really going to help you. The, the prophet of God, he, he was being persecuted by the king of, of Judah. Jeremiah 36, verses 6 and 7. The people of Judah um, were following in their footsteps of the rebels who remained with the king of the north, which kept the name of Israel who were taken captives by Shalmaneser, the king of Syria, and who were dispersed, they were never restored as a nation again. The people of Judah committed the very same sins. There are people who can see what's happened to Jerusalem, but they think that it will be different with all of them, that they're allowed to sin all they want. But the devil is going to destroy that person's life. If this is your case, stop doing this. You are no exception. Every single one of us, everybody will be treated the same. So then what happened with Judah? Since Jeremiah was used of the Lord to convey strong messages, everybody hated the prophet. So he decided to enlist the help of a man named Baruch and told him, listen, write these words of prophecy here. Go there and read it before all the princesses and everyone else. And Baruch went and did that. What did Jeremiah say then? It's recorded here in verse 6 of Jeremiah 36. You go, therefore... And read from the scroll which you have written at my instruction the words of the Lord. In the hearing of the people in the Lord's house on the day of fasting. And you shall also read them in the hearing of all Judah who come from their cities. It was a very serious message. Then he said this. It may be that they will represent their supplication before the Lord, and everyone will turn from this evil way. For great is the anger and the fury that the Lord has pronounced against this people. My brothers, what we actually get from all of this, among so many other things, is that our supplications, both mine and yours, they must come before the Lord God. There's no way that your situation is ever going to be changed. 
And it won't help to cry when there's no turning back. Pray for me, for the love of God. I want to repent. I want to, I want to confess. I want to be changed. I want to be healed. Sometimes it's just too late. Even when we look at the entire situation because your faith did not grow, you've put your foot on your faith. You didn't let it grow. Its growth has stunted and you have a big problem. There's no way that your faith will be, will be developed overnight. This does happen in a very few cases, but in over a thousand percent, I don't know how much, in 99.9% .9 of the cases, there'll be no remedy. The person will, he will pay the price and they pay the price really. This is very serious. When the end comes, the degree is given and that old woman with the skice comes carrying the big old bag already full of souls. It will grab yours and take it as well. There's no remedy. So we've got to become, to become aware of that today. Your supplication needs to come before the Lord. But what do I need to do if, if, for that to happen? You must turn from your evil ways. And you know what evil ways we're talking about. You know it by the word of the Lord God. And you also know it when the Lord God starts to rebuke you. Why, Dr. Suarez, I feel so bad. I felt as if there was something evil around me, you know? What are you doing then? Are you being obstinate? You are not just feeling it. That is a reality. The devil wants to get you and the Lord's been protecting you. The Lord's been allowing you to feel that so you'll say, Lord, I don't want this. Change me. That's all he needs. Why? He can go ahead and delete those evil desires from your heart. He can change your viewpoint. He can cause you to become a different type of person. And that is what is needed. The entire evil path, it must be forsaken. And you need to go through the narrow gate. What is, what is this narrow gate? It's the word of the Lord. And then through the difficult way, in addition to having, having difficulty, having a hard time and making an effort to go through the narrow gate, you have to squeeze in order to go through the difficult way. And that is like sandpaper. It cleanses everything and you come out perfect on the other side. Take hold of the word of God, folks. Don't, don't let it, don't, don't, don't think, but I am different. Nobody is different. God has created everyone from one man and from this man, he created the woman. Not even she was created separately. He took a part of the man and created her. We really are all exactly the same. But if you do not forsake the evil, if you do not go through the narrow gate and through the very difficult way, you will never get to that place you need where you need to reach because the wide gate does not require any effort at all. The wide gate is wide open. Come on in here. Everything is allowed. There's no problem at all. No, I must be careful to walk according to, according to the word. Because when you're far from the divine love, you do know where you're going to be. You'll be close to the enemy's hatred. The further you drift away from the calling of God, the more you fall into the enemy's lap. And he is so mean. He is mean. He is nauseous. He is absolutely malevolent. He only wants to harm you. He wants to torture your life and to destroy you. Look, if you get into the word in just a very short while, you will start pleasing the Lord you will see that you have changed. Now you are someone who's in control of your life. You're a person who wakes up smiling, goes to bed smiling, and the circumstances will not matter. Ah, poor fellow. Do not use this word when you're referring to me because I'm walking in the presence of God. But they've done something so terrible to harm you. That was all the work of the enemy, but I don't really care. I'm walking with Jesus. I've already overcome that. But don't you hate so-and-so for that? No, that doesn't have a place in my heart. I've been praying for that poor soul to be converted because I am standing firm with the Lord God. Then it may be that your supplication, as it says here, it may be that they will present their supplication before the Lord. It may or it may not be. It will all depend solely on us acknowledging how many evil ways are actually present in our lives. In my life, in your life, many, more than we can imagine. The Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful. It is so desperately wicked. And who can know it? Sometimes you may think that you are saying a very spiritual prayer, but you are really praying with malice in your heart. The evil ways need to be removed. And only one thing can do that. Only one thing can cleanse you. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the Lord God who does the work. Otherwise, you, supplication, will never come before him. It hits the ceiling and returns to you, but it doesn't pierce the ceiling. It doesn't reach God. Your prayer is not presented there so that you may then attain deliverance from the lies that you're used to telling people and that you often tell God too. <laughs> Lord God, you know the, that, that my way is pure. <laughs> the Lord God is very patient. 
My dear brother, there is no one righteous, not even one, says the Holy Bible. If we do not remain in the Word of God, surrounded by it, being used by it, we are capable of lying even to God. Though that's not possible since God knows everything. But the person has the nerve to say, Lord, you know that I am innocent. Then he's convicted. That's true. I've committed that one sin, then God convicts him a little more. And also this one, that one, that one. What can I do in order to overcome temptation, Dr. Schwartz? There are only two ways. With the word that the Lord God has given you, Jesus overcame the devil by using the word. He came to tempt Jesus. Over there in the desert, Jesus said, it is written, it is written, and by using the name of the Lord. As soon as you quote the word of God and use the name of Jesus to rebuke the devil, it produces such a great fire blast that everything the devil has prepared for you is burned and then neutralized. Then, if you remain in the word, if you turn from your evil way, for, you, for, for great is the anger and the fury that the Lord has pronounced against his people at that time in the spiritual realm because they were in opposition to God. They've translated as the Lord has pronounced. So the Lord had allowed it because they were opposing him. The anger and all of the fury were, tr were truly great in the spiritual realm, but not today. Today, it's the love and all of the grace of the Lord that are great. John 1.17 says, Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. My brothers, today it is great. It is truly great. You don't know how much love the Lord has for you. The Lord doesn't want you to get ever lost. The Lord doesn't want you to suffer forever and ever and ever and ever for all of eternity. No, 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 no. The Lord wants you to stop. You haven't gone too far, but you need to stop. You watch the program. I'm talking to the person who's at home now. And I'm talking to you too. You watch our program every day. You cry before the Lord God. Great is the anger. No. Great is the love and the grace of God. My brother, this move out of the Lord God towards you, there are no words that can measure that. Either you make a decision or tomorrow it might be too late. Amen, brothers. I would like to say a prayer. Recently, God's been using me a lot for those who have a problem in their hands all the way from... From, from the wrist to the fingertips. Does anyone here have a problem in your hands? Lift your hands so I can see. Several people, I'd like for you to stand up in the name of Jesus. Don't, don't take too long. Some people take a long time, don't they, folks? I don't know why. What if everyone stands, but not everyone has a problem in their hands? Dr. Schwadis, it's not in the hands. It's in the arm, in the forearm, up here in the shoulder. If you have a problem from the shoulder to the fingertips, stand up as well now. Now it's, now it's time, but look, please, if you are thinking of praying now the same, the same way you've already prayed here or elsewhere, it's not going to work. It's already been proven that the prayer wasn't, it wasn't worth anything. So we are going to do it differently today. We are going to pray, and you're going to do the same at home. When the prayer is finished, do whatever you weren't able to do. You couldn't open and close your hands. You're going to open and twist your hand. Listen, God's going to remove the lump. You've been cut by a knife or whatever has happened. You've fallen on the, on the floor in the street or at home. Or you've had a surgery. You've had a stroke. Things have gotten pretty bad. You need to take hold of the blessing now. But don't limit the Lord. Maybe God's going to heal only this finger. No, he's going to make all your five fingers move again in the name of Jesus. Same thing with your arm. When the prayer is over, don't sit down yet. Bow your head and close your eyes. Father, I join my faith to the faith of this person who has a problem in their hands, in their fingers, in the spaces between the fingers, in their knuckles, in their wrist. Father, wherever the problem might be, in the arm, in the forearm, in the elbow, it might be, oh God, in the ligaments, of the shoulder. Father, wherever it is now, in the muscle that lifts the arm, in the back, I ask of you now, come down with all of your power, come personally and heal these people. My faith is now joined to the faith of all these people. And as a minister of the word of the Lord, I now rebuke all of this pain and I say now, pain come out of this person's life go away I rebuke you I command you to leave right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and don't ever come back come out of their lives 
This is the command I'm giving you. This is the command I'm issuing now. Do not come back. Come out, uh, out, of, out of the hands and of the arms in the name of Jesus Christ. And you say, thank you, Jesus. I believe. Look at me now. Now do whatever you couldn't do with your hands. Everything you could not do. If you could not lift your arms before, lift them both up now. Go. Look at this wonderful sight. But lift them way up high, folks. Are you going to limit God? How come? Dr. Schweides, I have managed now. I, I want five people who have managed to do it now. Lift your hand in the name of Jesus. Quickly, worker, zip you, sister. Tell us what happened. My right arm, it had been for how hurting long? for about six months. How about now? The pain is gone. And well, with me, it's very fast. I've understood we can move on. You, my friend. I had a problem with this arm. I had arthrosis. How long have you suffered from that? For over 10 years. How far were you able to lift your arm before? Ah, just a little bit. And now? Oh, glory to God. Who else? That brother, or rather you, sister. Go ahead, sister. My hands, they, they were always tingling. Anything I picked up would fall. And now, I'm God has healed you. He is God. wonderful. You, my friend. My arm, I could not move it. I couldn't even hold the handrails on the For press. how long? Uh, about three months. Now you're free. Now it's fine. Glory to God. Up there in the gallery. Hi, Dr. Suarez. I'm from Salvador. Last week, I watched the service at home. You said a prayer for the hands, and I had a problem that every day I lifted my hand to praise God, my finger would do this. Now you're praising Amen. forever, you, my friend. A very strong pain in my arm because I work with a stacking machine, but now I'm now healed. Now you're free. Glory, Glory to, God. to God. You, my friend. I've been feeling a lot of pain in my wrist because of a fall that I took. I could not do this. Look. Now, thanks to God, look. How long have you had this problem? I've had this problem since uh, 2015, uh, two years, around that. Uh -huh. I fell from a ladder. It, it's too bad that I won't be able to hear more testimonies, but folks, we're out of time. If you've been healed, lift your hand like this. Say, do this with your hand. Look at that, folks. Almost 100%. If it's not 100, let's give Jesus a big hand. <laughs> Doc, you may be seated in the name of Jesus. Oh, God is so good. Take hold of it because we are going to pray again and you will be blessed. Walk in the word, folks. Receive it prudently, and you'll see what's going to happen to you. Um, let's watch the real-life drama now, shall we? The Lord has placed in Jessica's heart the dream of becoming a lawyer. In 2010, she was admitted to a university in Araraquara. There, she began a journey of perseverance toward the victory. Let's watch. I said, Lord, how am I going to get through this university? How am I going to pay for it if I don't even have a job? The first month, my mom managed to pay the tuition for me, but after she couldn't afford it anymore. We had to do everything in faith, by faith and in faith. She would attend school six months then renegotiate her tuition debt so she could continue to study. At the end of the semester, it was time to negotiate the debt. Only in order to do that, I needed to have a checkbook. But I didn't have a checking account. I would tell her, I don't know where, I don't know how, but the Lord is going to change your life. One day, I was talking to my brother, my middle brother, and the girl he was dating at the time, she gave me six blank checks. She had signed them knowing that I, I didn't have a job. She signed them and gave them to me. The girl wasn't even a Christian, but God touched her heart so she could provide, provide for this urgent, urgent need. The following month, I got a trainee job at a law firm in my freshman year. This is practically impossible. The whole time, she persisted, overcoming all the difficulties to finish college. One day when I got to work, my, my boss at the office called me and said, look, you know the situation we've been going through in the office. You've been helping us a lot, but we're going to have to let you go. Then I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do now, but I know that you're by my side. So I was unemployed for just one month. Then I got a job at a syndicate, which was not exactly in my field of work. But at that particular time, that job really came in handy. A friend filled out an application for Jessica to take a civil service exam and work for the city. When I started working for the city as a toll collector, my mother immediately said, listen, I'm not going to rest until I see you working for the law department at the city hall. I had a small part to play, I just had faith. While she was working for the city, Jessica managed to pay all of her tuition debt. Her excellent job performance called the attention of a government secretary who invited her to work at the legal department she had longed dreamed of. The next step was passing the Order of Attorneys of Brazil bar exam. At that moment, a special calling made all the difference. 
the Lord touched my heart and I became a sponsor. I had to juggle my job, the university, and the bar exam. Everybody would say, no, she's not going to make it. Why? There's no way. Most people tried three, four times, but she was determined. I passed the first phase. I studied really hard for the second one. Whenever I sat down to study, I would pray, Lord, you have always been my teacher. You have always helped me. So let's go for it, Lord. I need you to teach me because my teachers are good, but you are better. I took the second phase. I passed right away. I finished it and I managed to write my thesis. I've just graduated now at the end of this year. Today I'm an attorney and I'm a member of the Brazilian Bar Association. What I can say is that, is that she's the pride of her family because she's the one that excelled in the midst of so many difficulties and no opportunities, you know, for her, for her to graduate. And she managed to, to fulfill her dream, which ended up being our dream too. Today I'm 23 years old. I've been working for three and a half years as a tenured civil servant and I'm an attorney for the glory of the Lord. Well, she has become a child of God by leaving the faith that she's learned, that I taught her, she's learned through my teaching and my example. I also gave her spiritual birth, you know? Trusting in the Lord is definitely worth it. We determine, make a plan, and with Christ, it always works. Let's give the Lord Jesus a big round of applause, folks. I would like to say a prayer for all of you now. Let us stand, folks, because the Lord is going to pour down His power upon us, and He's certainly going to work mighty wonders in the name of Jesus. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. God, you have truly helped, and you do help, and you shall continue to help. Everyone, everyone who inclines their ears to hear your word, to learn Oh God, what you've been teaching us, like the verse we studied here today in Proverbs 15, 5, that we must never despise the Lord's correction. But prudently, we must receive your rebuke so that we may feel fulfilled. Lord, I want you to change this person who is unemployed, who has a lot of depths, who is sick. Lord, leading them to a life of fulfillment now, and I'm going to bless them. In the name of Jesus, I neutralize every work of the devil in your life, and I command him, come out, go away right now. Father, in the name of Jesus.